Okay, so the last portion of this uh, lecture, I want to talk about NP hardness of approximation and some of the stuff I talked about a little bit in, in lecture 20, but I'll recap it somewhat. Um, so here's like another like uh, SAT style syllogism for you. Um, 3SAT is to NP hardness as this problem label cover is to inapproximability. In the sense that like, um, 3SAT is like the, you know, er problem that everybody likes to start from when you prove things are NP hard. And similarly, if you want to prove things are not just NP hard, but NP hard to approximate to some factor, like the er problem that everybody starts from is called label cover. What is label cover? Uh, it's a kind of CSP. And actually there's a parameter Q, which is the size of the domain. So remember domains, uh, CSPs, you know, they have some variables that you're assigned, trying to assign values to from some domain. And then label cover parentheses Q, the domain is just the integers one through Q. And you're given some constraints and label cons cover, all the constraints are binary, meaning they operate just on two variables. So then it's good to draw the picture, the CSP as a graph where you have a, a vertex for each variable and a edge for each constraint. So in the label cover problem, you're given a bipartite graph. And in fact, you can even assume it's regular on both sides. So it's a very enjoyable graph. It's a bipartite graph. And each edge represents a constraint. And it has like a pretty liberal kinds of constraints. So every cons edge like has a constraint written on it. And it's just given by like a truth table, kind of. Um, it's given by a function, pi sub uv, like you have one of these pi's for every, written on every edge, and the pi is just a function from 1 through q to 1 through q. Okay, just given as a table. I think of q as a constant, I don't know, 10 or something. Um, so pi of uv is uh, just a list of 10 numbers in that case. So as always, you're trying to find an assignment of um, domain elements, numbers one through Q, to all the vertices U in U and V. And you want them to satisfy as many constraints as possible. And what is the constraint? The constraint is like, it's this kind of, it's called a projection constraint from the capital U side to the capital V side. And the meaning of this pi is whatever value you give to, let's say, this vertex, like six, that's a value between one and Q, pi is a function, so it maps six to something maybe three, and this constraint says you have to give this guy the value three, or that's what you should give. Um, okay, so the constraint on edge little u little v is that whatever you assign to u, if you pass it through the pi that's written on the uv edge, that's what you're supposed to assign to v. It's a little hard to get the gist of it. It's some kind of generalized graph coloring problem, but this is the problem. Uh, that's sort of like the great starting point for all hardness of approximation results. So here's the theorem about it. It's uh, actually uh, bus stop two on that like bus tour that in the proof of host size theorem that took us from like three sat hardness, PCP theorem got us to uh, slight inapproximability for three sat and Raz's theorem, which is called parallel repetition theorem got us to hardness of label cover. That's this piece here. And then Hostad put some Fourier analysis on top of that to get this hardness of 3x or approximation. But here's uh, Ross's theorem from 1994 about the hardness of label cover. And this, you know, is like unconditional. It's like a proven theorem. Well, it's conditioned on p does not equal np. So it's about a problem being np hard. And it's saying the following. For every small number delta, there's a sufficiently large q, which is, you know, polynomial in 1 over delta such that this label cover problem is not only hard to solve exactly, it's even hard to remotely like optimally solve. So this notation, if you recall, delta comma one approximate means basically, I give you a label cover instance with domain size uh, Q and I even promise you that there's a perfect assignment that satisfies 100% of the constraints. It's NP hard for an algorithm to find a solution that satisfies a delta fraction of the constraints. So you can set delta to be you know, 0.1%. And it says any algorithm that can find a, an assignment satisfying 0.1% of the constraints in a perfectly satisfiable label cover instance uh, can be used to solve SAD in polynomial time. So that's Raz's theorem rewritten up there. And as I said, like this is like the starting point, even more so than Hostad's theorem. It's the starting point for many, many 
optimal inapproximability results. So this is Hostad's theorem. We already talked about it, but it's a reduction from Ross's theorem. That 3xor, it's hard to half plus epsilon comma one minus epsilon approximate. Hostad also showed uh, an even better result for max 3 sat. It's better because this thing is one. We talked about this, I think, in lecture 20. So uh, it's known that even if I give you a perfectly satisfiable 3 sat instance, it's NP hard to find an assignment that satisfies more than 7 eighths of the clauses. And that's tight because there is an efficient algorithm that satisfies 7 eighths of the clauses. And there's also an extremely uh, strong hardness result for max independent sets, um, starting from uh, hardness of label cover. It says, I give you a graph where there's an independent set of size n to the 0.99. Uh, if p does not equal np, then there's no polynomial time algorithm that can find an independent set of size n to the 0.01. So there's an enormous independent set. It's like almost all the graph. Well, it's n to the 0.99 vertices. You can't even find an independent set of size n to the 0.01. And by the way, this problem is np hard, but it can be solved in time basically 2 to the n to the epsilon, 2 to the n to the 0.01. So that's an example, like I was saying before, of an NP-hard problem that can be solved in uh, 2 to the n to the 0 0.01 time. There's one downside of Ross's theorem, which is related to the uh, blow-up size of the reduction. And the trouble is, if you set like delta to be you know, some constant, then Ross's theorem you know, takes a three-side instance and produces a label cover instance of size n to some constant. So the blow-up is really, it's like, it's exponential kind of in, in delta. So if you said, you know, delta to be 1%, then, you know, the blow up here, might, this thing might be n to the 1 million size. And that's not so great because then if you want to say like, oh, now I'm going to use like ETH to conclude, you know, that it takes a really long time to solve some of these problems, not just that they can't be done in polynomial time, which I get out of P does not equal NP, but I want to use ETH to show that they take a really long time. It's not so great. Like you can only conclude that because the the blow up is like n to some huge polynomial, you can only conclude that let's say 0.51 comma 0.99 approximating max 3xor requires time two to the n to the like some really small constant, which is still exponential. But on the other hand, you know if this is like time four for any value n that you ever encounter in real life, like. If n is smaller than 2 to the power of 100, then this is at most 4. Okay, there are big O's in there, but you get my message. Uh, but I got some good news for you, which is that, uh, oh no, I had some good news for you, but I accidentally deleted the slide. Okay, let me tell you the good news uh, in words. It's, uh, I'll put a smile on your face because uh, later with Moshkovitz, Okay, I won't write it out, but it's Donna Moshkovitz. Uh, this is like 2010. Um, they got a reduction that for any constant delta, this was like n to the one plus little o of one. Okay, so for delta, even as small as like, I think one over log log n, the reduction had almost linear blow up. And therefore, actually you can conclude that this requires time to to the n to the one minus little o of one. Okay, so basically two to the n time. Okay, so um, that's great. Okay, so last thing I wanna do is contrast this with uh, the unique games problem, which I also mentioned in lecture 20, and I'll just tell you a little bit more about it. So the unique games conjecture made by Code in 2002 was really motivated by this Ross theorem. You know, this Ross theorem gave this like really strong hardness approximation result for this label cover problem and was used to prove many, many, many other optimal inapproximability results, but not everything you wanted. So there's some problems that we couldn't show were NP hard based on label cover. And Code noticed that if you made like one small tweak to label cover and assume that that didn't change the fact that it was NP-hard, then you could get all sorts of additional cool NP-hardness results. But didn't know how to prove it, so it was made a conjecture. And um, 
it's about label cover, but all the pies are now required to um, be bijections. So we talked about this before. We called this uh, CSP like bijection parentheses Q. So like in that bipartite graph picture, like not only does the, when you set, when you choose a candidate assignment for this vertex, does it force what assignment you're supposed to give to the neighbor vertex, also vice versa. And so that makes the task certainly a lot easier. And in fact, if I give you a 100% satisfiable instance, it's easy to find that satisfying assignment. But if I only give you a 99% satisfi satisfiable instance, it's not so clear how to solve it well. And this is a conjecture that for all delta, if you make Q big enough, the domain size big enough, then even on instances where it's possible to satisfy, you know, one minus delta fraction of the constraints, it's NB hard to satisfy a delta fraction. Okay, and again, many more optimal in approximability results were able to be deduced, assuming this unique games conjecture. For example, we saw that there's this semi-definite programming algorithm for max cuts that in polynomial time always finds a cut that's within a factor of 0.878 of the maximum cut. It's proved by Gomans and Williamson. And it was shown that if you assume this unique games conjecture, then this is tight. You cannot get 0.878 plus epsilon. Which is kind of funny because 0.878 is like a strange number. It's actually this presumably irrational or transcendental number, uh, the solution of some trigonometric equation. In fact, Raghavendra in 2009 proved an amazing generalization of this. He basically showed that assuming the unique games conjecture, we know the optimal approximation algorithm, efficient approximation algorithm for every CSP. We showed take any CSP of arity k and consider this degree k SOS semi-definite programming based algorithm. And basically whatever approximation or certification it achieves, it's NP hard to do better than that by epsilon. And so it's sort of saying, you know, that this is the best polynomial time algorithm, this SOS algorithm uh, for approximating CSPs, but only assuming this unique games conjecture, do we know that? So that's a super amazing result. It would, um, if unique games conjecture is true, it would really close the, a book on the, the theory of approximating, approximately solving CSPs in uh, polynomial time. But uh, let me just end this uh, lecture by asking, you know, well, is it true? Is it false? Um, like indistinguishability obfuscation, it's one of these uh, hardness hypotheses that it's kind of more controversial or people are not sure whether they should believe it or not. Things like ETH, I think most people believe. Pygus hypothesis, I think most people believe. Um, even as uh, Seth, but we'll see. Let me just briefly mention that uh, it's known that this is equivalent to getting half of the uh, constraints correct on instances that are one minus delta satisfiable. So uh, here's some evidence that it could be true. I mentioned this before, just uh, two years ago, uh, Cote, Minzer, and Safa proved a variation of the unique games conjecture called the two to two version, where instead of bijections pi, you allow two to two maps, which makes the CSP more complicated and therefore harder to potentially solve. And they showed that you do have um, basically delta versus one minus delta approximation hardness for this. And as a consequence, um, you get delta versus a half approximation hardness for UGC. Okay, so unique games conjecture is equivalent to saying that if I give you a 99% satisfiable instance, it's NP hard to get half. They showed that if I give you a half satisfiable instance, it's hard to get 1%. On the other hand, maybe the UGC is false. So in 2010, it was shown by uh, Aurora et al. that you can solve the task of getting a half of the constraints correct on a one minus delta satisfiable instance in time that's like two to the n to the delta to the one third. It's pretty funny. Uh, but for any fixed constant delta, or for like, uh, you know, really small constant delta, this is like a really small sub-exponential quantity, like two to the n to like something tiny. 
So that's kind of close to being polynomial time. And as we saw before, like um, if you assume ETH, which is less controversial, this is sort of like the easiest an NP-hard problem could be. Like under ETH, you can solve NP-hard problems in time two to the n to the epsilon, but not better than that. So we kind of know that you can solve the unique games problem in time two to the n to the epsilon, um, but it's still possible that it's NP-hard. Uh, so we really don't know. And let me just say that, you know, there's a third strange thing here that I sometimes like to think about, which is that maybe it's not clearly important whether it's NP hard or not. It seems to be de facto easy. So the unique games conjecture has an extremely strange property that even though it's conjectured to be NP hard, we don't know any hard instances. We have no way of writing a computer program to generate unique games instances, maybe at random, or we don't also know a polynomial time algorithm for solving those instances. This is quite in contrast to like, you know, the max three X three XR CSP. And like, we don't know any explicit family of instances which are not already solved by this polynomial time SOS degree four algorithm. So it's a problem where like, it's conjecture to be hard, but like, we don't even know how to find any hard instances. So maybe in practice, it's easy. Okay, so that's a bit of a philosophical note to end on. Uh, I guess I shall end the recording here. But as always, I'll stick around uh, to answer any questions. And otherwise, I'll see you at the last lecture on Thursday, which will be about a sketch of the proof of the PCP theorem.